you know that anxiety in the heart of man causes depression? But a good word makes it glad. Here's Dr. Gloria Mitchell with good news for you, a weekly program to encourage your heart. Hello, my friend. I'm Gloria Mitchell with good news for you. Today, I have a guest who's going to help me share with you about the topic of prostitution. So we're talking about a slide into prostitution, similar to what we had between Judah and Tamar in the book of Genesis, chapter 38. And so today, I welcome Jacinta Bryson. Hi, Jacinta. Would you tell us a little about yourself, please? Hi, my name is Jacinta, and um, I've been dealing with prostitution for since I've been in the twelfth, or the eleventh or twelfth grade, and I'm now twenty nine years old, and um, it's been a, a really crazy experience. So I just want to, you know, share my story and give a little insight to some of the parents out there to look out for their kids. Because um, it's really serious out there nowadays and people are coming up missing, getting hurt, um, don't know what to do. And, and it's it's just I just want to share my story. So, OK, so let's talk about your story. Tell us how you started out in this profession. Well, one day I was on this website called Tagged. It's a dating website. Um, what I was trying to do is just I basically made a profile as if it was just Facebook or Instagram and I posted a couple of pictures and I also wrote my about me. Then uh, like soon, not long after I made the profile, I started getting messages from guys from all over the world. And then I came across one guy that wanted to talk to me off of there. And I told him I didn't have a phone at that time because I didn't have one. I was in high school. And my mom didn't give me no phone. So he was like, can I get you a phone if you do something for me? And I was like, what is that? So basically he wanted to have, you know, sex with me to get me a phone. So I met up with the guy. Um, he got me the phone and I went to his house and I ended up having sex with him. I was very young and I knew that I was what I do, was doing was not right because I was trying to hide it from my mom. And she didn't understand how I even got the phone. And um, it's just it's just scary because no, anything could have happened to me when it came to that guy. He he lived pretty close to where I was living. And, um, yeah, that's just how it started. And then more guys started messaging me. And then I started meeting more guys. And it just carried on for, for years until I started to do prostitution on the street. And I ended up getting a pimp. That was abusive. You got a pimp? Yeah. How did you go about getting a pimp? Well, I was on, this is when Instagram started coming out. Um, I was following some girls that were prostitutes, and I liked it what they were posting, so I liked it on a couple of pictures. Then a pimp messaged me and said, oh, I see you liking, um, what do you want? You want to meet up or anything like that? So I met up with him on one of the streets that girls do prostitution on. And um, I prostituted for him like a week or so. And then I stopped dealing with him because he became more violent because he was trying to get me to like him when I didn't like him like that. I thought I was trying to be like a business type of thing. So I stopped dealing with him. Then I came across another guy that was a pimp, but he really wasn't one. He was trying to be one. I could tell the difference. <laughs> there's these, there's like wannabe pimps out there that trying to get into that game, um, just trying to use you and, and finesse you and, and play mind games with you. Okay. So you're saying you could tell the difference in, in the, the wannabe pimp and the pimp, just yes. like... Uh, yes. The wannabe gang member and the gang member. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So how did you hide whatever you were doing from your your parents? Well, I would act like I'm going over a friend's house. That's how I would hide it. And, um, yeah, that's basically what I would do. I would just say that I'm going over a friend's house and wasn't going there. I was going somewhere else. Or I was also, after high school, I was uh, I went to high school school. Uh, College. I went to Southwest College, mm -hmm. and after class, I would have one of my clients. I would call him a client. You can call him a trick. Um, 
a sugar daddy. There's so many different names out there. John. (laughs) Yes. So I would have him come pick me up from my school and we'll go to his place and just chill out and stuff like that. And he'll give me money and or I would get gifts. I really wouldn't accept gifts. I didn't like gifts. I would take money. I didn't like gifts. But when I was young, if that was the first thing I did was for the phone. I didn't have a phone, but most of the, I do it for the money. Okay, now in the scriptures, Tamar asks Judah, she says, what will you give me? So what will you pay me mm-hmm. if I give myself to you? And so he didn't have the money or the pay at the time, but she said, give me something, pledge something so that I'll know that since you promised to pay me, you will. So the question would be, since you are uh, asking for money, did anybody uh, have sex with you and not pay off? Yes, there's been times when I was in the car with someone, and this is when I started working on the streets. I He paid me. I did a little something. I gave him, you know, a little something. And then I don't know where he said that he had a knife. So I started wrestling with him. I had a long weave, and it started wrapping around my face. I, could, I was getting suffocated, and it was really hot in the car. And I just went on and gave him back the little money that he gave me, and while I was wrestling with him, he bit my back. And then he hurried up and got out the car with my phone because he was trying to get my phone. He took my phone um, and he drove away real fast. And this was when I was on Figueroa. That's one of the streets that, um, you know, workers, prostitutes, workers, um, escorts, sugar babies, whatever you want to call them, um, work. Oh, I know you call it the blade. Yeah. We okay. like, that's one of the nicknames. We call it the blade. There's so many names that you can, you know, that they have out there for the streets. And, yeah, it's really, really dangerous. I've had a gun pulled out on me. I've had to fight a guy before. Um, I've had to move out of a, a, get out of a moving vehicle. I've been left in a mountain before, close to the beach. It's it's really dangerous. So if it's so dangerous, tell me, why did you persist in it? Did you like the thrill of living dangerously? No, I I liked the, the thrill of catching a date. Of I like catching, catching a date. date. What, do, what does that mean? Date. Catching a date. Catching a guy that wants you to have to, you know get money from them. Oh, okay. So it's the money that lures you. Yeah. Okay. So what is it that kind of uh, pulled you out of that lifestyle? Um, my daughter, because I went to jail recently and I got out of jail and I'm trying to better my life for her. Um, I, don't, I wouldn't want my daughter, you know, doing the things that I've done. So I think about that. And then I also think about the girls that have done things that I've done that are missing. And um, I don't want that to happen to my daughter. So I need to I'm going to put it out there about how serious it is human trafficking is very very serious and there's young girls doing it now because they have girls all on the internet making it look like it's such an easy thing to do and it's just a fun thing to do or it's the thing to do when it really is not did you care about the dates uh, or the the johns or the people that you picked up like did as, you, as feelings like, uh, yeah feelings no i didn't have no feelings for them i even would rob them take their money take their wallet if they are slipping we call them catching a trick slipping mm-hmm. um i would take their stuff if they wasn't paying attention and yeah i didn't catch no feelings for them i don't have no feelings for them all i wanted was money from them did you ever fear getting pregnant like tamar did in scripture um no. by one of these people no because i viewed protection all the time mm-hmm. and if anything ever happened like if a condom break, you got to worry about condoms breaking. You can catch STDs, AIDS, HIV. I've always, I will always get um, tested, even if, like I've only, I, I've, and then also I have a, um, I use birth control. I have a birth control, so I never had to worry about getting pregnant. But even if you are not on a birth control, you do have to worry about getting pregnant because. There's girls that get pregnant by their clients. Yeah, that's what I was concerned about. Yeah, so I really didn't worry about that because I was on birth control and I never had a problem with a condom breaking. Did you worry about uh, anybody harming you physically after you had already had some kind of scary experiences? Yeah, but I would take that risk. 
you would take that risk. Mm-hmm. You're a bold sister. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Second Timothy 1 7 says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, mm-hmm. but a spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. Well, let's see now. You don't have the spirit of fear. You've already showed us that. Uh, you, you've shown us that, but um, power. So there were times when you tricked the guys, right? Mm -hmm. You literally tricked them Mm -hmm. out of money or whatever. And how about love? We're saying there's no love in this. It's a business. Yes. Okay. Now, how does a sound mind uh, fit into this picture? Did you feel like you were operating out of a sound mind? Mm. Like, what do you mean as in a sound, a sound mind? Uh, did you, were you making wise decisions, you think? No, because did you choose the people? Did you refuse some and accept the other? How, how did this work? Yeah, some guys I didn't accept, like younger dudes that look like gang members. Uh-huh. And some I was, but like, it depends on how they look and how they act and, and how they treat you. So if I feel a certain kind of way, I won't deal with that person i didn't accept just anybody um you also have to worry about the police i had to worry about police going to jail you mm-hmm. know uh, my freedom you know you will have to go to you go to jail for this what was the charge prostitution yes okay and how long could they keep you it depends if you have a record or if you're on probation mm-hmm. um yeah it could be days or just 24 hours or just a couple of hours it just depends well, you're a beautiful young lady. Tell Thank me, t- tell me why you would choose that profession, not just the money. There must be something else, I would think, knowing that you could possibly get somebody who would just really love you and treat you with respect. I just like the thrill of getting easy money. Easy I feel like it's money. Easy money, fast money. I do have a job right now, mm-hmm. so... But it is it doesn't it's not as much as I would make in a night. Okay. So I liked it to, that money. Okay. It's like a money thing. Okay. And what does a pimp do for you? A pimp is supposed to protect you, be there for you, and um, you know, guide you and things like that. But if the pimp has more than one lady on the street, how can he be there for them? They'll make more. They'll make time for each one. Oh, they make time for them. So if you're in trouble over here, mm-hmm. you can call your pimp, and he would come. Mm-hmm. They're supposed to come. So they're supposed to know where you are. Yeah. Let's say you're in a motel room two twenty four. They they know yeah. where you are. Supposed to let them know. Okay, so you have somebody who's looking out for you. Yes, I see. Okay, so what words of encouragement would you have? Or something, some advice you would have for some young ladies who say, oh, I kind of like the idea of making easy money. Mm -hmm. What would you say to them? Well, I would tell them that all money is not good money. Um, Once you're in that lifestyle, it's kind of like hard to get out of because you start to get addicted to it. Um, It is not just for females, it's for males as well, because males do that too. Yes. So you have to be very careful about what you post on the internet and who you talk to because, and who you meet up with. And parents out there need to watch what their children are doing on the internet because it's it's starting off young, really young. Kids are coming up missing just because a, a parent might post a picture of their child on the internet and the, a person can find out where, they're, where they live and, and kidnap them. So, you know, it's very serious. Um, we need to start taking more cautious of the Internet because it's all out there. All these dating websites, there's all kinds of websites. Okay, well, thank you so much. May the good news, listen, may the good news bless your heart today, listeners. And I pray that God will bless you continually. Thank you.
You've been listening to Dr. Gloria Mitchell, author of The Garbage Man's Daughter, a book series written with hurting people and broken families in mind. You can contact Gloria Mitchell by calling 310-973-5802 or write to Post Office Box 5181, Gardena, California, 90249. Visit her on the web at encouragementbooks.com. That's mint with an I as in peppermint. Tune in again next week and be encouraged.